Welcome everyone and welcome to this week's F3 Fix track guide. We are at Suzuka and what a track it is. Uh, absolutely love it round here. Really suits the higher downforce uh, cars such as the F3 car. Uh, you can really throw it into those corners and it really is a rewarding um, experience. When you when you now every apex and and finish a lap it's it's so enjoyable and i can see why f1 drivers really love to come around here every single year they're always raving about it now the fix setup this week is once again on point i racing that is free for free for fix setups this year um so far this season um i don't know what you've done to them but whoever has put them together as i've said before big pat on the back please uh, because yeah not once did i ever feel like this is dodgy um, there is something to be wary of guys in relation to the curbs it's quite a low ride height with this setup um, so normally we'd be able to ride some of the curbs um, but not so much in this uh, setup which we will discuss uh, when we go through the lap analysis anyway but track temperature so track temperature was 21 degrees as always i set the conditions as per iRacing schedule time and date and then just generate the weather that's how pretty much the sessions are going to be done throughout the week so it's consistent conditions with um, what we're going to see throughout the week of course there's always some variances but it's there or thereabouts now the time i set was a 150.4 as always i can improve my optimum is a little bit better but i think that is a very good time for this week will i be able to do that in race trim who knows um, but yeah very happy with that lap so as always we are going to see that lap from a cockpit view then we're going to see it from a far chase camera angle and then we're going to analyze that lap as always to see how we did it see our reference points um, certain areas to be wary of and yeah put it all together so lo and behold let's get into it remember to hit that like and subscribe button turn those notifications on and enjoy
there we go guys that was our flying lap and fire chase camera angle of said lap now let's analyze it and see how we did it so we're on the run down to the first corner here staying over to the left hand side because obviously it's a right hander and we're just going to pause it here because this is our first reference point now what we're keeping an eye out for is this concrete runoff here and what we want to be keeping an eye out for is where it joins the track where it meets at the white line because this is our turning point as soon as you reach here as you can see i'm starting to turn the wheel in and we're coming down into the apex of the corner now this corner is all about confidence um you may be thinking that i, I can't break as late as this that's totally fine um brake bias does come heavily uh, it does heavily influence this as well so as always i always drop the brake bias down a few touches uh, because the fix setup is just too high um, so I've brought it down from 55.5, which is what it's set at normally, to 54.4. As always, guys, go out, do some practice, play around with it, see where you lock up, um, see what is the maximum brake bias that you can set your car at and feel confident with. But this corner in particular, it's a prime overtaking opportunity. So being good on the brakes and being confident on the brakes is important. So here, we're going to start braking our visual reference marker here. So we want to be as close to the red and white curb as possible. As you can see, halfway round, we've got uh, rubber markings on the red and white curb. And that is what I'm looking at as my braking marker. As you can see, we break kind of just before it, but that's my reference. And then from here, we're going to allow the car to drift out to the left. As you can see, you can see the, the rubber laid down in the track where it goes dark to the outside and then comes back in again. We're gonna shift down all the way into fourth here. Now, just something to be careful of, guys, when you allow the car to move over to the left, don't let it drift too far over. Um, you don't have to be all the way over on the red curb to open up this right-hander um, because you will lose time. And there's a nasty little thing about Suzuka, little tip for you guys, that if you do get a wheel on the AstroTurf here, you, knew, you do need to lift off because there's very little grip on the AstroTurf and your rear tires will spin. And in addition to that, there's also a slight little drop from this red, red and white curb to the AstroTurf. But when you re try and rejoin the track, as you come up, come back on, it really unsettles the car and the car just spins. I see it, I've done it uh, countless times in a number of cars but it's more prominent in the f3 car because we've got a low ride height so yeah avoid getting to this astro turf if you can if you do get forced onto there you run extremely wide slightly lift off the throttle um i know obviously we want to keep our foot on the throttle slightly lift off to make sure that you get on the track safely and don't spin the car so here we are you can see our wheels our left wheels are just inside the red and white curb we're shifting down into fourth gear now as we get halfway round and as we're starting to see the apex come into view on the right hand side we're going to shift down into third gear trail braking all the way around here as you can see my throttle inputs turning in making sure we as soon as we hit this apex similar to how we entered this corner there's some rubber on halfway round this red and white curb that we want to be keeping an eye out for and that's when we want to get down on the throttle trust the downforce as you can see here allowing the car to drift out slightly to this red and white curb and then up to the center s's as always guys be a little bit careful through there in the first couple of laps with cold tires and a full tank of fuel you will have to brake a little bit earlier you will not be able to get on the throttle as early as we have done there of course tires are up to temperature here we've burned off a little bit of fuel we're not a quality fuel we're about half a tank of fuel here and um, so car is in a nice place so just uh, yeah as always be careful there guys can't stress it enough now we come up to a brilliant section of corners, the center S's. And when you hook these up, it is so rewarding and so enjoyable. Now, as you've seen there, I've come out of the first corner, double apex, and I've moved the car over to the right-hand side as far as I can, because the left-hander is a sharp one here, but it's full throttle. We're gonna trust the downforce, turn in, take the curb as much as we can without going onto the grass 
And then as we get to the second portion, we're gonna lift off the throttle and we're gonna have a little bit of break, just a little bit. And we're gonna turn in and ride this curb as much as we can because what we want to do here, as you'll see, is that the next one is a left-hander. It goes round the right to the left. We wanna be as tight to this curb as possible so that we can be as far over to the right-hand side to open up the left-hander. So we've got a slight bit of break. And then as you can see there, when we got on, as we got onto the curb, where there's rubber on the curb, we then get back onto the throttle, allowing the car, so we don't drift all the way over to the left-hand side, because if you do, you're leaving yourself short-sided, short and you're gonna have to lift off the throttle to make sure you get round here. So there's a lot of time to be gained, lost here and gained. And then here we're going slightly on the brakes. Once again, we wanna be tight to this as possible. Now this left-hander, you're not on the brake as long as you are as the, pre as, as the right-hander. As you can see, on the throttle, as we lead, get past the AstroTurf on the left-hand side, we're back on full throttle, trusting the downforce, and then we come up to the right-hander. So very fast couple of corners, so much time could be lost and gained there. It's a very, very important. It's, once you get, it's, it's a very riv rhythmic uh, couple of corners. Once you, once you get the rhythm right, you'll do it every single time. So here, what we're going to do, we're gonna allow the car, we wanna keep it as tight to this curb as possible without getting on the curb. So this is a corner that we don't wanna be on the curb because if you do um, and you then get on the throttle, you'll spin the rear tires up and you'll spin it. Um, done that plenty of times in practice. So a little bit of a tip for you there, guys. But as we're getting up to this corner, as you can see, we lift on the throttle, we're having an ever so slight little bit of a break this is just to allow the car to turn in. We just want to get that front nose turning in. If we don't brake, the car just runs a little bit too wide and then we're, we're, not, we're not going to open up the left-hander that runs up the hill. So as we get halfway round the corner, as you can see where we've got more rubber markings. If you want a visual reference, as the grandstand comes to a finish here, we're then getting on the throttle, keeping it as tight to the corner as we can because we want to open up this left-hander because from here on out, it's full throttle, guys. As I said, full tank of fuel, cold tires, you will have to lift here because there's too much movement in the car um, and you just don't have the grip. Uh, but when you've got tires in temperature as we do, it's so enjoyable. Move the car over to the middle of the track and then you're keeping it tight all the way around this apex without getting on the curb. Allow the car to drift around and then keeping it tight all the way around to the right-hander. And that is the center S's. This, it's just so important, those first couple of sectors. Um, if you're looking at the fast guys of where they are gaining time on you, it is generally because of those first couple of sectors. Um, the rest of the track, there's always time to be found. But generally speaking, the guys are so much quicker than you because of those first couple of corners, or well, those first two sectors. Uh, the first corner and those couple of corners the center s's and um, that is my experience and that's what i found so if you can nail those guys uh, nail those sectors you're really setting yourself up for a good lap so we coming up to the kink here pretty much a quick right hander and we're keeping an eye out for the 50 ball marker and we're just going to have a little dab of the brakes as you can see and turn in and what we're going to do is we, we're getting back on the throttle as you can see as we hit this apex we don't want to go over the curb as i've said we've got quite a low ride height in this fixed setup and it really does unsettle the car so we're going to keep as tight to it as possible and then this is very important guys remember i said at the start there's a dip here in between the AstroTurf and the red and white curb. Well, it is very prominent here. Now, the low ride height, this is where it comes into a detriment because if you have your antenna a little bit over here, in the middle of the car running on this strip where the two meet, it literally sucks it in <laughs> like a train track. It's like glue. And it doesn't matter how hard you put on the brakes, by the time you come to the end of this, uh, where the red and white curb, uh, red and white curb, and the astro turf ends, you've just got grass, and it's a tight right hand here. You you will crash. So you do not, guys. You do not want to be running wide here and getting your car 
too far over because you'll just end up crashing. Um, it's it's something that you need, do need to be uh, keep an eye out for. So I'm I'm on the limit there because my <laughs> my left tires are pretty much just on the edge here. And this is this right hand is very important as well. You'll see a lot of people crash. Um, for one, like we just said, going too wide, and you'll see people crash because they go too wide here as well and take too much speed into this right-hander. Now, as you get through the very fast right-hander that we've just done, very quickly, you're gonna be back onto the brake, around about halfway down. As you can see, there's no visual reference marker. Unfortunately, it is pretty much just as you're halfway down this red and white curb. And we go shift down into third, and as you can see, we start to turn in as we see the apex come into view. If you wanna not be looking into the apex, I know you should be, but in your peripheral vision, if you wanna turn in point, it's as the red and white curb here in the Astro Turf comes to an end. All the while trail breaking round this corner. And then as we get to the curb, that's when we then get back on the throttle, as you can see. Really accelerating out of the corner. Now it's very, once again, as the last corner I suggested, um, or as I stated, same thing, train track. Um, you want to keep your wheels on the inside of this red and white curb. Um, you don't want them going over the left-hand side because it just sucks it sucks you in. Uh, it's really horrible, really annoying in this um, fix setup. We was right on the limit there, and then we allow the car to run up to the hairpin. So hang into the left-hand side and then to the quick right-hander, keeping it as tight as we can. And then as the car, as we just come around the corner here, as the red and white curb ends, as you can see, as the car is pointing straight dead on, um, we wanna be braking because you wanna be, brake, be, be braking in a straight line. So you wanna be braking just after you get around that corner. If you brake too late, you will lock up the tires and you'll run wide here, which will lose you a lot of time and can leave you a bit of a sitting duck to people nipping up the inside as well. But we're gonna shift down into second here, hanging the car out to the right-hand side because we don't wanna be turning in too early because then you've got too much of a shallower line and it affects your exit. Turning in. Now, little bit of a tip for you here, guys. I've noticed afterwards that I unfortunately held onto the brake here just a little bit too long as we went round the corner. So it's at this point here that really I should be off the brake. I'm going slow enough that I should be off the brake and allowing the car to roll round and get on the throttle. Unfortunately, I held onto the brake just a little bit too long and that just cost me a bit of time on my exit. Um, and it's quite a bit of a run down into Spoon Corner, uh, which is a prime overtaking opportunity as well. So if you can line someone up here, make sure you stay close to them and now the exit, you can overtake them um, at the next corner. But as you can see here, we're just on second gear and we're straightening out the, the steering guys before we get on full throttle. So we're easing on the throttle, we're on about half throttle here. But we straighten up that steering before we get on full throttle, because otherwise you're just gonna spin the car. Um, so that's something, uh, you'll see a lot of spinners there, and that's the reason why. They're too eager to get on the throttle, uh, and they'll spin it. Second gear for me works best around there. Um, in some of the open setups, you may shift down into first, uh, but in this particular setup, second gear, the revs are nice, uh, a nice rate. Uh, they're not too high. They're not too well. They're not too low, uh, and you get a nice drive out of the corner. Now, from then on out, we're just going to keep it tight to the track as we can, covering as little track as possible, and then we're going to run it all the way down into the entry of Spoon Corner. Now, what we are keeping an eye out for, guys. Uh, now, normally, in most other cars, you'll be keeping an eye out for this concrete strip but we're in a Formula 3 car, so we don't need to do that. And what we keep an eye out for is as the apex comes in just into view, that's when we then wanna be on the brakes. So we're braking a little bit after this concrete patch. In sixth gear, shifting down into fifth, and then as we hit the apex, because we wanna get over this corner, we're down into fourth gear. 
trail braking, back onto the throttle, allowing the car to drift out. Not too much, once again, because this is where you'll see a lot of people spin as well, they carry too much speed. The wheels will drop onto the AstroTurf, and as you try to rejoin, the car will just spin on you. So be careful, once again. So you have a dab of the throttle, and then we're back on the brakes, because you really need to try and get the front end turning in here. Now, if you're really going too quickly, shift down into third gear to get the car turning in, but fourth gear is quickest, i found. Um, some of you may prove me differently, <laughs> but in this setup in particular, fourth gear is the quickest way around here. And as you can see, we're trying to get the car turning in as close to this apex as we can. You don't necessarily have to get onto the apex. Um, you can be a little bit away from it as we are. And then as you can see, as we get about halfway around the corner, as you get to where the rubber really starts to show on the red and white curb. That's where we're then on the throttle. If you get on the throttle too early there, the car will spin on you uh, because you've got too much steering input. You do have to wait a little bit um, until you get on the throttle. And then from here, just opening up the steering, making sure you don't allow the car to run too far over here. Uh, it's very easy, but if you get your right wheels over this white line, it's an off track. So specifically in your qualifying guys, be careful of this because it's very easy to run out wide. And it's quite a bit of a step here, quite a bit of a bump onto this red and white curb um, that will affect your acceleration up the hill and can leave you a bit of a sitting duck uh, around the 130R. As you can see there, not too, very minimal bump there. But we're on full throttle, keeping it as tight to the left hand side as possible, covering as little track as possible into 130R. Now, normally 130R is a very risky overtaking uh, opportunity uh, because obviously there's a lot of understeer if you're on the inside. But in these cars, and particularly in this setup, there's quite a lot of high downfalls. Uh, well, we've got a lot of downfalls. So we can overtake here, guys. Uh, don't be afraid to. Um, if, as always, first couple of laps, cold tires, full tank of fuel, you will get a bit of understeer. So just be wary if you're on the outside of the car doing that. Um, but optimum temperature, optimum uh, performance, this car is gonna be a real joy to overtake around here. But we're gonna slow it down because we're gonna keep an eye out for the 50 bulb marker here. That is our turning point. And we're turning in. Now, wanna be careful here that we don't take too much of this curb um, here. I just got the left wheels on the curb. If you take too much curb there because of the ride height, once again, I can't say it enough, the car will bottom out and it just will unsettle the car. You'll lose a bit of speed. And then that could uh, allow someone to make the overtaking opportunity on the brakes into the last chicane. So we're keeping it over to the left-hand side as we did through 130R there. We're trying to cover as little track as possible. And what we're keeping an eye out for is the 100 ball marker. Now, 100 ball, just after the 100 ball marker is our braking point. As you can see, it's just gone out of view. That is where I'm braking. And we're keeping it tight to the left-hand side here. And we're gonna shift all the way down into second gear. But it's important here to trail brake into this corner. This is where a lot of speed or a lot of time is gained in this corner. Um, I, for a long time, wondered how were people making up so much time for this corner? Uh, and that is the reason why, is just through trail braking. So you don't wanna be hard on the brakes so that you then go through the chicane at a snail's pace. You wanna carry, as, of course, as always, as much speed as possible, and that's down to trail braking. So you can see here, as you get to this white line, or pretty much as, I almost see it as, as, as the, the, the white line here, as the track starts to bend in, that's when we then kinda of wanna start turning in. And you can see here, I'm on the brake and I'm trail braking. You can see the trail brake. Still trail braking. I'm a little bit on the throttle because I'm getting a little bit um, eager to get on the throttle. But what we wanna do here is we wanna take our right wheels over the red and white curb, not over this curb. So you will get an off track if you take too much of this curb. And secondly as well, once again, I'm gonna repeat myself, sound like a broken record. 
the right height. Um, the car really bobbles a lot off of this curb because of how low it is, uh, and it's not good for your exit and good for your lap times. So slightly over there, you can see even then it had quite a bit of a wobble, so let alone if we took more of that curb there. And then you can see we're on the throttle. So as we get through that, we're, we're on the throttle, then we're quickly back off of the throttle, a little bit on the brake, trail braking once again, doing the same thing, getting our left wheels over the red and white curb, but we're then easing back on the throttle, a little bit of oversteer there, covering as little track as possible, and then down to the start finish line. And there we go, guys. That is a lap of Suzuka, a 150.424 to be exact. And yeah, so enjoyable to put that together for you guys. Uh, I really enjoyed putting this track guide together. Really looking forward to the week as well. And yeah, hopefully, as always guys, uh, that improves your lap times, makes you faster, makes you more importantly, more consistent, and hopefully you gain plenty of eye rating. So yeah, thanks guys. Uh, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, turn those notifications on, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.